Speaking of crash and blow up rockets that are oh, cheaper. Oh, no. <laughs> so my big news story this week, this is Astra um, of what was a relatively secret rocket company who has tried to launch um, a handful of times now a small sat launcher, an awesome little launch vehicle that I've, I love this because it looks to me so much like a baby Atlas rocket, like those old school, <laughs> you know, 1950s, 1960s missiles, basically. Like this mm -hmm. just straight up looks like they are building a scale model version of one. Um, but their rocket here was for originally for the DARPA challenge to be able to basically take a rocket out of a shipping container and launch something into orbit like within oh, wow. a short period of time is basically, you know, a mobile it's and, like a and pop up rocket. Exactly. Um, and Virgin Galactic or Virgin Orbit's one of the other ones competing for this, you know, but instead of a shipping container, their, their way to do it is by dropping it off of a plane, you know, stuff like that. So this was finally on September 11th. This was their attempt to get to orbit. Um, and we, we see from their unfortunate tweets, you can kind of go T minus 10 <laughs> minutes, T minus five minutes, final ranges go. And by the way, they had, had taken this thing out to the pad like five or six times by this point. T minus 60 seconds, rocket is, in, is on internal control. T minus zero, lift off. And then it was about an hour before we heard any other update. And everyone's mm -hmm. going, or not an hour, but it was a long time. Way longer than <laughs> like, you know, we save separation or like any other event that would be happening. And we get, unfortunately, we get successful lift off and fly out. But the flight ended during the first stage burn. It does look like we got a good amount of uh, nominal, or in my case, nominal flight time. More updates to come. And just for a little, the little thing. This is how this is how big it is. The the rocket's uh, eleven point six meters tall. That's thirty eight feet tall. It's uh, one point three meters, so four point five or four point three feet wide. Uh, so it's very similar size. A little bit more stout or a little bit shorter and and but a similar diameter actually to to Rocket Lab's Electron. Um, and it's designed to carry up to a hundred uh, kilograms into low Earth orbit. So that's quite a bit less. Then the Electron, which now can launch about 300. This is a, a little graphic here by Jeff Barrett. So, yeah, it's it's a cool... And they're launching out of Kodiak, Alaska. I, for, I forgot to mention that, which is cool. They're launching yeah. from freaking Alaska, which is just exciting. So Well, it's so close to space. Look how far north it is. <laughs> yeah. So um, there is some video of this. Um, I, I'm going to just kind of... I, I don't know if we'll get what? copyright claim, but... Um, they They clearly didn't spend their budget on AV. Well, this is just a total amateur watching this rocket launch from the sidelines, basically. And it's going up. It lasted about 30 or 40 seconds or some of normal, nominal burn time. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden, Pointing the engine down. just completely <laughs> cuts out, right? And now, of course, because it's moving quickly, when the engine's cut out, it doesn't just fall. You know, it coasts yeah. up to its highest point, which is one of those things that people forget. Like, that's one of the things that, you know, when you're going into orbit, if your engine's cut out, you still are going for a long ways. And, you know, you you have a lot of momentum behind you. And that's a lot of the, the beauty of the rocket equation. But they finally are able to retrack it here before it hits the ground and check this out. Oh, Does it blow no. up? Please tell <laughs> me it blows up. Humbling. Please Just tell me. Humbling. Humbling. Give it to me. Oh, it's so tragic. Humbling. Humbling. And. Boom! Oh. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Full blown wow. explosion. And now this that's brings up where the forest fires came from. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it looks pretty green there. But um, this brings up the question to people: Why didn't they terminate their rocket? Right? Why didn't they, they self-destruct it? They didn't... What do you What do you guys think? Why Why didn't they make it blow up before it hit the ground? Do you know this, or are you know. just like, yeah, yeah? Of course you do. Why don't they just blow it up, guys? Because they did lost they lose control. communication with it? Yeah. No and no. No. They, well, Ben kind be of a little money. bit. They they did lose control. The guidance was off. They, so they hit they hit it, but it didn't work. <laughs> or did there it, was there was a deer that they were aiming for <laughs> on the ground. I don't know. <laughs> They're trying to do the Cuban cow missile crisis only in Alaska this time. Right. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so basically, what happened? Their flight termination systems don't necessarily mean big kaboomy. A flight termination system can be a system that immediately shuts off the engines, you know, that is, that's a functional way. As long as it's, you know, so what happens is they have a flight corridor, right? And as long as the rocket's flying in that flight corridor, as soon as it's veering to the point where it exceeds a limit, the flight termination system just cuts the engines and then it can't do anything 
you know, any damage outside of the of the predetermined zone of danger, basically, right? So your flight corridor is narrower than your exclusion zone. And so as long as the second the rocket leaves, they can actually just cut the engine. So their flight termination system is actually engine shutdown. That is a oh, valid, but it's, it's a separate system. It's not like it's the same system that runs the engines. It's like a, it's like a, oh crap button, you know, that, that terminates <laughs> the engines, but doesn't rud the vehicle. And this has some advantages okay. that, you know, you can have more time to, to transmit data back down to the ground. So say there is, you know, a problem They the teams will collect more data from the vehicle. They're able to see more stuff about the, the anomaly. You also have a smaller debris field. You know, if you blow up a rocket really high up yeah. and it can rain debris forever. The good thing about blowing up a rocket, though, is you do ex you, you expend all that energy of the chemical explosion up high so it doesn't have as much impact on the ground. But you also have a, a raining debris cloud that's, you know, could be very, very large. Mm -hmm. So there's that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Like there might be some hazardous chemicals in there that when you blow it up, that stuff starts to or maybe that all gets vaporized. I don't know. But. Well, it, it doesn't really get vaporized. It just spreads <laughs> debris everywhere yeah. when you blow a rocket up. Yeah. So um, it it didn't go as planned, but luckily the flight termination system worked as required. Um, this was considered not a intended flight, but I, you know, hopefully it gives them some good some good data to move forward. Still, I they, it sounds like they're kind of in, into their last round here of trying to make it. Uh on that graphic, it said that was the last flight, right? The most recent flight, but they potentially oh. could fly. Like they're raising funds or having enough funding, I think, for one more attempt, basically, before they potentially go bankrupt. So it's, it's that's the hard part. There's so many companies that are trying to do these small launchers, but to actually get all of your systems to work, you know, there's there's only one way a rocket can get into space without every, you know, correctly. There's a million ways it can go wrong, you know, and so it's it's still really, really, really hard. And watching a company like this full of brilliant people, you know, working to try to do this at a new cost and at a new scale and watching how hard it is just re drills in the fact that this still is rocket science. This still is space flight. It's still really, really hard. And uh, reinventing the wheel and trying to make the wheel cheaper is not the easiest thing in the world still. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. Very difficult. That's cool, though. It's cool to see the companies doing interesting stuff like this. Oh, I love, I well, love the scale of this vehicle. I love the fact that they can put it in a shipping container and literally just send it to different launch pads. I mean, it's really cool. Yeah. And SpaceX was in this exact same position in its early days, yes. so maybe they'll pull it out and and do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. The Falcon One had three failures before they got to orbit. And that's something that Elon even commented on. He said he commented on the the when they said that it was. Uh, didn't succeed. He said, sorry to hear that. I'm sure you'll figure it out, though. It took us four launches to reach orbit. Rockets are hard. Yeah. I, I do like that he, he is... He, I've seen him do that with other uh, providers. Like, well, when the Electron, when the, that one Electron didn't quite work out, he's, he's he seems... Supportive. He seems supportive yeah. of that. I mean, he know. has he should have some empathy there. He's been through right, the, yeah. that exact thing, this, you know. I would hope so. The space industry in general seems that way. Maybe I don't see it, but, you know, in the car industry, in the EV space, it's like cutthroat, <laughs> hate each other, try to sabotage everyone. It's really like, you know, l like this, whereas space, it's like, ah, we're, you know, it's tough. Like, give it a go. Well, <laughs> like, he, he might not be that way with Blue Origin, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Oh, didn't he call him a copycat or something? But see, I kind of like billionaires fighting because it's like, eh, <laughs> like like little yeah. sissy fight kind of a thing, you know? Like, you know these guys aren't <laughs> tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's been some <laughs> back and forth security. between, you know, Jeff and, and Elon about their space companies for sure. But it's still, I feel like it's still, there's still a greater vision than the actual, like, selling rockets to space flight that I think a lot mm. of these especially the engineers, the people working in these companies, a lot of people are just huge space fans. They just want to see space explored and see our presence in space expand and learn new discoveries yeah. and things like that. So there's this romantic vision of what space is and can be, you know, accessible. And, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the uh, but at the same time, you know, um, yeah, they're, they're generally pretty supportive of everyone. So, cool. yeah. Sorry for the failure, Astra, um, but we're still cheering for you, of course, and uh, hopefully you guys can, can knock it out of the park next time. I think hopefully they learned a lot on this one and 
and no, it seems like the engines were running great. It seems like everything else was, you know, the fuel up and everything. They they got all that stuff down. So now just getting that guidance system really, 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 you know, tweaked and figured out. Go over, cross every T and dot every I or whatever, and we'll see you at the pad again next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.